Without wasting any time, let's go on to the next one. Now, the green one is pretty similar to the yellow one. It's just uh, they give us a polynomial instead. Now, I didn't talk about this about the other one. I should have. But if we want to use the mean value theorem, in this interval that they give you, this function has to be continuous and differentiable. If it's not, you can't use MVT. It'd be like, no, can't use it because the function is not continuous and differentiable there. So... Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and set up the formula like before. So we have, uh, let's see, it's an F. So it's going to be F of negative 1 minus F of negative 7 over negative 1 minus negative 7. I'm trying to find the average rate of change. That's also called the slope. And you guys know how to find slope. We got Y minus Y on top, X minus X on bottom. You guys should remember that stuff. Okay, and on the other side, we're going to have F prime, and C is what we're going to be looking for. So, what is F prime? F prime of X is going to be 3X squared plus 18X plus 13. All right, so let's rewrite some stuff. I'll plug in the F prime in a second. Let's first find out what F of negative 1 is. I'm going to do this mentally. But there's a lot of steps, so I'm going to also write down stuff as I go. If I plug negative 1 into that guy, into this term, I'm going to get negative 1 plus. If I plug negative 1 into that, I'm just going to get 9. If I plug negative 1 into that, I'm going to get negative 13. If I add that together, that's going to be negative 14 plus a positive 9. That would be positive 5. No, negative 5. Right? Am I right? I guess try again? Okay. Next one's not so much fun because it's a negative seven. I don't really want to go seven to the third uh, to the third power, but I'm gonna have to do it. Did you guys already do it already? Maybe you can give me the answer. It'd be great. Seven times seven is forty-nine. Times seven would be oof. Uh, that's a three. You put a six up there. What is it? Three four. No. Wait. Did I? Oh, you guys are doing the whole thing already for me. Hold on. 7 times 4 is 28, plus 6 is going to be 34, right? 343. So that's going to be negative 343 plus, what do I get when I plug it into that? Oh, that's disgusting too. That's going to be 49 times 9. Uh, that's 1, 8. And then 9 times 4 is 36, plus 8 is going to be 44. So it's 441. And then the last one is, oh, times 7. 13 times 7? I think we know this one. Um, what is that? Uh, that? Is that 91? I think it's 91. Yeah, it's 91. And um, it's going to be negative because uh, it's negative 7. So we get negative 91. So 91 and 343. If I add those, that's going to be 4. That's going to be 3, 1. It's going to be 434, but that's a negative. So this is negative 434 plus 441, which equals what? Oh my goodness, it equals 7. All that work just to get a 7. Well, that was kind of annoying. On the bottom, I get a positive 6. On the other side, I have a 3c squared plus 18c. Man, this is a lot of like algebra stuff. Yeah. All right. Negative 5 plus negative 7 is a negative 12. Negative 12 divided by 6 is negative 2. So I have negative 2. Well, actually, I'm just going to do this. Put a negative 2 right here. I have to add negative 2 to both sides. Oh, this is a lot of work. So I get a 0 equals 3C2. I got to add the 2 right here. Um, plus 18C plus 15. Hey, hey, what can I take out of all those terms? I can take a 3 out. So divide this side by 3, divide this side by 3. What do I get? I get 0 and something way cuter than what we just had. We get C squared plus 6C plus five. Wait, are we going to just ignore the fact he called that one cuter? Guys, don't worry about it. Um, now, if I factor this, it's C plus five and C plus one out. All right. So what are my two values of C? Negative five and negative one out. Are both of those inside my interval? Yeah, I checked my interval over here. And, it, and they are. So they're both answers. Looks like we have two tangent lines that are parallel to the secant line that runs through negative 7 and negative 1.